Hey everyone, welcome back. It is October 1st and I had a bit of a timely topic that I wanted to talk about, which is uh, choosing fruits to grow that are easy to grow. And the reason I bring this up is my parents recently were asking me about uh, choosing some apple varieties to grow. And um, I found myself talking them out of it. And the reason is this. So here's some apples that I recently picked. This is an unknown variety. Um, it had a tag on it when I first got it, but the tag, or when I first got this place, but the tag quickly fell off. And I'm not sure what it is. But the point is, um, pretty much all of these, except for like a handful of them, like say this one, they have bug damage. And that causes them to ripen ahead of time, fall off the tree quickly, not get to full size, you know, all those things. And um, while it is possible to get organic or even beyond organic apple, vari apple fruit that is, you know, free of pests and disease, it's really difficult. And if you wanna grow apples, ask yourself, how much time are you willing to devote to this thing? Because the permaculture orchard has a lot of information on how to grow apples that are scab free, bug free, low coddling moth, uh, decent size, all this stuff. But there is a lot of time involved in that and energy. And if you're like me and you have a day job, which isn't this, I would highly suggest picking something else such as Asian pear, which has better success rate, but not, not great. I mean, there's a lot on here. This is Chajiro that uh, don't have any bug damage, but there's also a lot that do. So I'm going around picking through the fruits and we're, we're having a bit of a wind today, so some of these are dropping off, but you know, by and large, a lot of them are pretty, pretty bug free. Although, you know, the bugs are starting to like, they're starting to get a hold of them. So I've been hanging traps like this, which is just molasses and water. And uh, it is getting some of them, but not, not a lot of them. Now contrast that with this, which is my Fuyu persimmon tree. And check this out. No bugs. No bugs. No bugs. No bugs. Nothing. Absolutely every fruit has nothing wrong with it. The leaves, no problems. Maybe tiny, tiny bit of some kind of rust or something, whatever that is. But by and large, no disease, no pest. Um, yeah, it's taken me some time to put some stakes in the ground so that the tree doesn't fall over because it's bearing so heavily. But besides that, these are pest and disease free in North America, as far as I know. So if you can grow persimmons, I would suggest doing that over an apple. And the trouble is that uh, the things that are pest and disease free, people generally don't know about. So things like uh, the persimmons, figs have no issues that I know of. I mean, maybe a little bit, but by and large, you know, these are like orders of magnitude easier than apples. Sea berries back there have no problems. My other persimmon back there, nothing. Um, let's see, elderberries, no pest issues. I mean, they have some stink bugs on them, but nothing terrible. I've got a yuzu citrus back there that I think is probably gonna have no issues. So what I'm getting at is that for your climate, your particular area, the particular niche that you're trying to put these in, you know, shaded, sunny, partly sunny, stuff like that. Uh, take a look at the unusual fruits because uh, the pests and, and diseases here just haven't had enough time to work on them. Or, you know, they just, they're just not selected for, so they're way easier to grow. 
you know you won't be hanging traps you won't be testing to see if there's bugs that are in the traps you won't be spraying you won't be you know etc cetera, etc cetera. and that, that's a lot of time and plus you know all the pretty much all the fruit you harvest will be uh perfect and, and usable and will have a good storage life and all that so food for thought the unusual fruits are the easy fruits the ones that everybody knows about the cherries the plums the apples the you know pretty much you name it if it's at the grocery store chances are good that i mean within reason that they have a humongous amount of pest and disease issues so you know you can get away with a little bit of like choosing a particular variety that's more uh more disease resistant that's good always do that um but but think about the odd fruits uh, another thing the, another one to mention that i i haven't talked about is the pawpaw which is is native to north america and also has zero issues so unfortunately i haven't gotten any pawpaws to show anybody yet because they're still a little too small but um they don't have any problems so that would be another one and pawpaws are delicious so if you if you want to give them a try they're well worth growing they uh they have a fruit that is pretty large and tastes like a mix of a banana and a mango which is pretty awesome it's the end of the season so some of the leaves are turning yellow some of them are starting to fall off um but like besides that you can see that like the leaves look really good this one's got a little bit of an issue but not much and they grow in shade so this is the north side of the house here and these things are perfectly happy you know within reason i might trim this birch tree back eventually to open up some of the sunlight in here get some more sun down in here but yeah think about the unusual fruits <laughs> They're way, way, way easier to grow. All right, that's my update for the for now, and uh, talk to everybody later.